Hey guys! Um, so tonight I actually wanted to do another video about the uh, rosemary hair rinse. Um, I've had a couple questions from people since I've made the first one and I've actually come up with uh, a little bit easier way to do one. Um, so I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys a little bit. Um, now one of the first questions I had was, um, and this was one I just got recently, I think I just got it a little bit ago, and it was, um, can you use store-bought rosemary instead of something that's fresh? Um, now, what I always recommend is you want the herb to be dried. Like, you don't want fresh rosemary. Um, you do want the dried herb. But um, herbs that have, um, that are in the stores, most of the time, unless you get it at, like, an actual health food store, um, where you can, like, it's actually in a, uh, a bin or a jar or something where you can actually, like, put it into a bag yourself and smell it. Like, if, if you're buying it, like, bottled um, at, like, Meyer or Walmart or something like that, normally it takes so long for that herb to actually get onto the shelf um, that by that point, herbs are, are good to, for about a year um, you know, give or take, they can last a little bit longer depending on how they're stored. Um, but a year is normally a pretty good range for herbs to still be good for their medicinal uses. Um, so by the time that herbs that you cook with, rosemary, basil, anything like that, that you get in, in a store that's bottled, um, by the time they get onto the shelf, it's normally been a couple years. Um, so you're not going to get the, um, the, the, you're not going to be able to extract the properties that you're trying to extract from the herb from buying one in a store because most of those are so outdated that other than tasting the same for food, there's really not a whole lot, uh, to be done with them. Um, so I really, really highly recommend regardless of where you get it, um, you know, if you have... Uh, a local shop in your area um, that sells herbs, you know, an actual um, uh, health food store that sells good quality herbs, you know, definitely support them. Um, otherwise, you know, shop online with someone you trust. You know you can always go to the Green Eyed Owl. Um, that's where I get my, uh, my herbs from that I, um, that I can. Otherwise, I go to our, our local shop around here if I need them a little bit quicker. Um, but I highly recommend getting an herb that is still fresh. They're dry, but they're fresh in the scent that they're under a year old. Um, so that was one of them. Another one was, if your hair is dyed, will the rosemary, um, the rinse hurt your hair at all? And the answer for that is no, for the most part. Now, if you just dyed your hair blonde... Um, this is something you probably don't want to use a whole lot because when you're done with it, for those of you that have used it, um, if you've seen it, it is a very dark, dark, it's like a dark reddish brown. And so if you use it quite often, it's actually, um, continue, you can actually see, ah, you can really well, see the red in that? I dyed my hair back in October, um, like a reddish color, and so, uh, my hair, like part of it is red. And the other part is my dark natural color and it has darkened and stayed that way from the rosemary rinse um, i haven't dyed this in months october uh, normally it, it washes out by then i just used like the walmart stuff so it will darken your hair and even possibly add a small reddish tint now i use this uh a couple times a week because I don't care how dark my hair gets. Um, but if you're worried about what color your hair is going to turn, um, you know, use it once a week or maybe twice a month. And if you are blonde, uh, definitely refrain from using it quite often. And if you're really worried about it and you are, you do have a lighter color, you can use calendula, uh, which is marigold, in the place of rosemary. Um, and... Now, I think I'm getting, I know the second terminology I'm going to tell you right now I'm getting right, but I think the first video that I showed you guys, um, you were making a decoction, which is where you put the herb in, um, in your boiling water, 
and you simmer it, you know, you turn the heat down, you simmer it for about an hour. Um, I believe that's called a decoction, which is the first thing we na made. Now, this is actually the easier way I found to do it, and this is an infusion. And what this is, is you take your pot, fill it up with however much water it is you use for your hair. Now, I actually use like a full-on water bottle. Um, it's not this size, but I mean, it's one of like the bigger water bottles that you can get from Meyer. It's pretty hefty. I don't think I have, I was going to show you one, but I don't really have one. Um, but it's a hefty water bottle and I fill the whole thing and I use the whole thing. I continue to rinse it through my hair till I'm, till I'm done. So it's about two and a half to three cups of water or of rinse that I use. Um, so, you know, put however much water you need in your, in your pan here, um, bring it up to a boil and mine's been boiling for a minute now just because I've been talking. Um, but, uh, bring it up to a boil and while it's doing that, um, you will take your herb, got a cute little, cute little jar here, keep my rosemary, isn't that cute? And then you will take your tea bag and this oh this is a uh, tea ball um, but this is actually one of the bigger ones um, because I use so much that I got one of the the larger ones I'm not sure if you guys, oh, I guess you can see me um, then take your teaspoon this is hot uh, tablespoon whatever this is actually I think this one holds like three tablespoons of goodiness um, the other ones hold like one to two. And so, there we go. Okay. Then you are going to fill up your tea bowl, or if you want to use a muslin bag, you can do that as well. Um, and then once this comes to a boil, now like I said, mine's been boiling for a minute, but once it actually comes to a boil, you will shut it off, remove from the heat, Take your tea ball, drop it in, and cover the pot. And you will let that sit there. You want to cover the pot just like before because you don't want to lose any of those, uh, any of the oils because the oils that are getting into the water, um, that are diffusing into the water, is what you are putting in your hair. And if you take that cap off, you will be losing a lot of those oils that you don't want to lose. So you will set this here in this because I will wash my hair in the morning. If you couldn't tell, it's a wash day. Um, this will sit overnight. Um, you'll at least want to let this infusion sit for four hours at the very least. But what I recommend doing is if you're somebody that's going to wash your hair in the morning, get this set up overnight or the night before and let it sit overnight. If you're going to wash your hair at night, then get this set up in the morning, let it sit throughout the day. And the nice thing about this is, so it's gonna sit here, you're gonna wake up in the morning, it's gonna be a dark, dark, dark reddish brown. Um, you get your water bottle, you get your mug, whatever it is that you use to pour in your hair. I use a funnel, my funnel's dirty. Uh, I use a funnel to pour it in there, and then after I do my baking soda and then my vinegar rinse, I will completely pour this over my head and I do not wash it out. Um, I will pour it in and then I just kind of wrap my towel around it for a minute and then I will pat, like, pat it dry. Um, but I don't wash this out so it has a very pretty rosemary scent afterwards. Um, and the really, really nice thing about this is that you, uh, when you go to use it, patches, don't touch it, thank you. Uh, when you go to use your uh, rinse, it's cold. Uh, and so that's actually the best time to use it when it's cold because it's very, very good for your hair and for your scalp. It's good for frizzies. It's good for bringing the blood to the surface to help your hair grow. Um, it's actually, if, if you can stand it, which I've been starting to do and I've noticed a big difference, if you can stand it, it's best to wash your hair in cold water. Um, I wash the rest of my body obviously in, in hot water, but when it comes to my head, um, I actually will turn the water on as cold as I can stand it 
and that really, really, really helps with hair growth. Shower feels cold, it's better for your hair, and this is so much easier than standing over a stove for an hour and watching your stuff and making sure it doesn't boil and all that other stuff. I mean, you can do the other one, it works just fine, but I have found that this one is much easier for those of us that have very strange schedules and work at different times and you gotta be up doing this and running with the kids and all that different stuff. So, uh, that is, I'm trying to think if I've had any other questions. I'm sure I have, but I just don't remember them. I know the hair dye was a big one and then uh, the, the one that I just had about I think that's it. So anyway, um, I hope you guys have a great night. Hope that this helps any of you that have been using the rosemary rinse to um, kind of make it a little bit easier for you. And I think that's all. So I hope you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you later. Bye.